Yo folks, Rhino here, talking aloud, we're just gonna share ideas related to behavior analysis, and we're talking about career suicide. First two videos are already uploaded if you wanna go check them out here. Now, Urban Dictionary talks about this as to perform an action or partake in an activity that will totally discredit you and nullify any chance of personal advancement. Now, this was proposed by a patron supporter, top link in the description if you wanna go check it out, um, where we were just talking about different scenarios in which behavior analysts might find themselves potentially running into a situation where they can run into this. Uh, the first one was on supervisory positions and just growing too fast. The second one was on a company, my personal story on a company that we started, uh, ended up having to close and it failing. And the third one here is talking about burning out in an executive position and stepping back to a lesser position elsewhere. And I've been thinking about this one. I think I can keep it short. The field of behavior analysis, really in the industry, has a lot of different potential positions that you can work within. Some of them are seen as more or less, uh, I guess, important or have more or less responsibilities, different responsibilities. Uh, I guess maybe it's the impact of those, those responsibilities and what they might have on the organization or others that you're serving or responsible for. And I don't know, I don't, I don't think stepping back should in any way be seen as a potential thing to, to not hire someone for or provide an opportunity for down the road. I don't see how you'd run into this with the right employer, someone that agrees with your value set. And the reason is, is I think part of finding a career for someone that's jumped around a bunch of different positions is figuring out what are you good at? What do you enjoy doing? And like, what are those reinforcers, right? You can have reinforcers of like things that you don't necessarily enjoy. That's why I separate those out there. You might just like getting a lot of work done, getting your, your plate cleaned off, but that leads to a lot more work being put on your plate. So you're kind of like, why am I doing this? Let me get out of here. There's a giant bug. Make sure I'm not gonna get stung. See? No thank you, dude. And so for a behavior analyst, you develop your clinical skill set, your managerial maybe skill sets, you're working your way up in the organization, have a caseload, maybe a director, things like that. Um, do you enjoy these sort of things, right? Are these things that inherently, as part of engaging in those tasks, do you enjoy those activities? Um, you've got to look at that. I don't think any job out there is perfect for anybody. Uh, I've yet to find one there. There's just pure joyful in every single part of the process. Editing these videos hours. This guy's still hanging around here. But when it comes to things that are your reinforcers, that's, I think, where you can spend a little bit more time there. And, and for me, uh, as I shared in part one of this video and really part two, there's parts of businesses or engaging as an employee in different roles in organization where I learned things that I enjoy, I'm good at, things that reinforce my behavior. Um, and where those kind of line up. And if there's an employee that can figure that out and, and get themselves into a position where, regardless of it's upwards or downwards in an organizational chart, sideways, whatever it is, if you can move yourself into a position where all those are lining up, you're really just stacking the deck to be more effective. Now, it has to fit with an organization's mission, vision. Uh, it's gotta be something that's drawing in cash at the end of the day or helping you know, further the business in those sort of ways. Like Those things really matter. Um, but for me, I've, I've never moved from a higher position to a lower position necessarily. I have across organizations. I think that's one of the ways you sometimes got to jump into new organizations. I went from a clinical director of one program down to a case manager in another. Um, those sort of things in a moment are kind of, I remember at that point being like, you know, I've had a case manager position before. I've had a clinical director, like I want the clinical director at a minimum thinking that myself and advocating too at that point, but they were like, sorry, this is what we got. And I remember that being a little bit of an issue for me, but really it's a new system. Those people don't know you. Uh, the people you're gonna be interacting with day to day, your coworkers and such, like you kind of have a fresh start in those sort of situations. The time that I did step down from a role in which I was responsible for part of the services, it was kind of like we split this clinical director role into three different um, people's responsibilities. So while we had 120 people that were served and three people responsible for those 120 people, I was responsible for certain processes for all those 120 people. Came down to like the staff relations, staff training, things like that is what I was responsible for. While the clinical and the data analysis and other things were totally off to some other managerial um, 
positions that I was working with uh, at the same level of the organization with there. When I stepped out of that role, I actually stepped not downwards in the organizational chart. Functionally, that, uh, this is what I was looking for. I was looking to get out of the day-to-day -day of those sort of things, realizing that my reinforcers that I got from that job um, weren't lining up with things that I enjoyed all the time, and they weren't um, always calling on me to do the things that I love to do that I was good at. So it was kind of a mix of all those things. But I was lucky enough in that organization to where they, uh, the leaders in that organization saw my skill sets as useful for other things oriented to the mission and vision. So I was able to not step out and down, but step to the side to a different position where I was helping develop different um, behavioral services, organizational trainings, internal and uh, collaborating and creating contract work, even some grant work with uh, people outside of our organization. I consider myself really lucky in that circumstance in which a lot of the things I was good at were recognized. Me having conversations with my boss and like this isn't something I necessarily want to do all the time. And them also showing me and providing examples of like, hey, I think you're disengaged on these activities because you don't enjoy them as much as you think you do, right? Like that all being figured out, I was really fortunate to be able to have a position I could step to on the side and really them believing in me for a good 12 months giving me a salary to develop revenue streams and get things going. So I really think it comes down to, do you have the skill sets or not? Do you enjoy engaging those skill sets or not? And what are the reinforcers at the end of the day? Uh, just because you enjoy something might not mean it's reinforcer and vice versa. And so you've got to really figure those out. And for me, on the whole topic of like, will this prevent you from other options later down your career? I think it's amazing if somebody knows what it is that they enjoy, why they don't do something anymore. Uh, I don't know if this is something that every employer out there appreciates. It definitely seems pretty U.S. centric that, you know, if you've, if you know yourself, your value, your worth, what it is that you like doing, like you're probably going to find an organization out there. Like it's not like you're, you leaving an organization is going to be, uh, or leaving a certain position is the end all be all for you, especially in such a demand for a BCBA right now, um, board certified behavior analyst. But that's my take. I don't know. Pass the question off to you. Be interested to know what yours is. If you step down in a lesser role, what were the implications of that? If you don't feel uh, like sharing that publicly, you can always DM me. I'm actually off grid right now. Uh, I'm spending some time in the mountains, so I'll get back to all these as soon as I can when I get service again. Um, but this has been a really fun thought experiment on things, um, helping me reflect. So I appreciate it uh, to the patron out there that submitted all these. I'll make sure that you know that these are up here and reach out to you. Um, but yeah, hopefully this is useful to somebody and uh, that's your Talking Loud Daily BA episode.